Hi, this is Graham from Genoms Astro. Today we're going to try and produce an image of Messier 45, otherwise known as the Pleiades or the Seven Sisters Star Cluster. So we're aiming to produce an image perhaps that's something like this. Okay, so we're going to do that using um, a William Optics GT81 a refractor and it's going to sit on top of an equatorial mount. But in keeping with uh, the spirit of this website, we're not going to use all the bells and whistles. So we're not going to auto guide. We're not going to use bias frames or flat frames. We're just going to take a series of uh, light frames, dark frames, and we're going to stack them together um, in Deep Sky Stacker. And then we're going to enhance them uh, using PaintShop Pro. So that's the kind of basic process you can follow. Absolutely, there are ways of getting a better result, uh, a more sophisticated approach than the one I'm going to show you. But um, this is what we're going to do today, and we'll see what we can produce if we uh, try to keep things simple. So here's the setup. We've got a telescope on uh, an equatorial mount. Um, we're pointing at a bright star that is near to the target. And we've got the Canon digital SLR with live view connected to uh, a laptop. So the first thing to do is to focus the telescope. I'm using a Bartonoff mask. So this allows you to get a really good focus on a nearby bright star. Uh, and then after that, you take the mask away and do the light frames. So what I do is I use the timer function um, to set up a series of light frames, all of the same duration. I'm using 60 second light frames um, and with a little bit of a gap in between each one to allow the, the sensor and the camera to cool down. And as we're um, running through the light frames, I periodically uh, open one of them up uh, using the digital photo professional software and have a look just to make sure that uh, nothing's gone wrong, that the, uh, the tracking's still working well and um, the focus hasn't shifted because these are the sort of problems that you can have and you can easily waste a lot of time. And finally, we uh, put the lens cap on the telescope and take some dark frames. Moving on to post-processing, so I'm using the Deep Sky Stacker program. So you open up the program and you select the light frames that you've captured. In this case, I think in the end I've got just over an hour's worth and put those into the tool and then do the same with the dark frames. So I've only got um, nine or ten files here, um, but again they're taken with the same exposure settings as the light frames. So they're all inside Deep Sky Stacker and I choose to check all the files. Uh, you can check files that are above a certain number of stars, but this is doing it the simple way. And then finally you register the check pictures. And I usually set a percentage here to say I want to use the best 95%. You notice that it's got a little bit of amber text there. That's telling me I should, I should use bias or dark frames or um, bias or flat frames. And then finally, uh, off it goes. So we've, we're now registering the pictures, and this is a pretty lengthy process. So um, after it's completed that, it'll move on to stacking the frames on top of each other. And then finally, after you've maybe had a couple of cups of tea or coffee, then you'll get an image produced uh, out of the end. Um, which slowly builds up. You can see it slowly populating. It looks like a black and white image. Um, that's normal. And you wait for it to be fully uh, populated. And then you save the file. Okay, and then the important thing here is to not use compression and to select that you should embed the adjustments, any adjustments that are made, but you uh, should not apply them. Um, that way the, any changes will be stored within the file, but they won't um, change the file itself. Uh, you want to do that in another um, software application. So store away the file and then you can close uh, Deep Sky Stacker. Now I'm using PaintShop Pro, basically because it's affordable image processing uh, software and you open up the frame that we've just generated from Deep Sky Stacker and uh, edit that frame. 
And really what we do here is um, a bit of trial and error, but basically um, we repeat a process where we use a function called levels, which um, generally darkens the frame a little bit and removes a bit of noise. Um, uh, you see I'm setting this lower boundary to one or one in this case, and then you use a, a curves, which is a function which you can set up a curve like this, um, store it away, and it effectively amplifies certain sections of the image. And you repeat this over and over again, um, levels and curves, levels and curves. And the best thing really is to just trial and error with this. Um, it doesn't appear to be making any difference, but if you persist, then eventually, if you look at the stars, you will start to see um, a bit of definition um, around them. Um, there we go. We're starting to see a little bit of nebulosity, which is obviously one of the things we're looking to see uh, in this particular target. So carrying on, it's looking better each time we repeat the cycle. And um, there it goes. That's looking looking really good. And now. There's lots of similar functions. I won't profess to be an expert. You can uh, use other methods of um, adjusting the, the brightness, the intensity of the different parts of the image. So, for example, here you can use a histogram adjustment and have uh, sort of use the sliders and see what it what it does. Uh, it's your picture. Totally up to you. How what what you like is is your preference. And then let's just have another go. A one more set of curves and see what that does. And then, wow, that's a big difference. So yeah, I like that. I'm basically going to uh, take that as my final image. And then I'm just going to add a little text note here so that I can um, remember the target. And when, when I took the, uh, took the image, just generally I'll put that in the corner of the frame. Uh, again, it's up to you, personal preference, whether you choose to label, label your image. Okay, so that, that's that. So what else? Um, so while we're here, we can have a bit of a look at the detail of the image and um, a few points to note. So we can zoom in. Uh, clearly the stars in the centre of the frame are nice and round. But if you look in the corners, you'll notice that uh, there's a general uh, elongation uh, of all of the stars um, at the extremes of the field. This is because I haven't used a thing called a, a field flattener and a fast scope like this um, GT81 um, will get this, you'll get this effect on the outside of the frame because it's not flat and it's not a problem here. Um, I'm looking to do a review of a flattener in the future so we can come back to this and compare uh, before and after images but overall um, pretty happy with that and then just if we go back to compare what we have from deep sky stacker you can see it's almost like magic the the, the image um, processing has gone from just a black and white series of dots to um, quite a nice image showing the nebulosity okay hope it's been useful thanks for watching